Let's tell the tale of two separate units of measurement. One is the metric system, one is the English system. Now the English system came first. And a lot of people like to trash in the English units, and I totally get it. They're not particularly useful for converting between. The conversion between a foot and a mile is a pretty obscure conversion. The conversion between an inch and a mile is pretty obscure. A gallon versus, I don't know, an ounce? Not particularly straightforward. But it's a good starting point for explaining where the metric system came from. So this video is much more quantitative. It's a history lesson. So when we look at the English units of measurement, they were not designed with the idea that they would be converted between. They were designed with the idea that they were practical for what they were measuring. So if I want to quantify what an inch is, I just look at my thumb. Because one knuckle is roughly one inch wide. And so when they were looking at the inch, they looked at the inch because the inch did a really good job of working with things that were on this scale. Because keep in mind, this is back in the day before microscopes even existed. So they need to go much smaller than an inch. So if you're working with things like a sheet of paper, something that you can handle in your hand, an inch was a practical unit of measurement because typically things you hold in your hands are on the scale of your thumbs. But let's say I want to look at height. Well, thumbs aren't particularly useful, but a foot is. A foot is a very useful unit of measurement because it's roughly the length of your foot. So your foot is roughly 12 inches long. So if we want to look at things that were on the order of my body height, the foot was a very useful unit of measurement. We also had yards, three feet, roughly the height of a human being. So the foot came about to measure things on that length scale. Now let's look at the mile. Well, the mile was typical of what you could walk in a day. So we didn't really care how many feet you took, it didn't matter. A mile was a much better gauge of how far you could go. But again, we typically didn't see conversions between these two. So when we look at the English system, the English system was really built around practical everyday things. We look at the temperature of Fahrenheit. A one to two degree, one to two degree change in Fahrenheit really is not that significant, but it does reflect what we see on a daily basis. Typically when we see Fahrenheit changes throughout the day, they're 10 to 15 degrees. So the scale is stretched out really far within the range we live in. So Fahrenheit is useful for day-to-day -day discussions. So where did the metric system come from? Well, there were two things the metric system had to address that the English system did. First of all, the English system sucks for the real world. Nothing operates on Fahrenheit scales. It's all working on centigrade scales. Surface of the sun, thousands of degrees centigrade versus tens of thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. The other thing is that when we look at the boiling point of water versus the freezing point of water, the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit versus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we don't really operate between 100 and 212. Like most life doesn't really exist in that range. So we've got a whole chunk of the Fahrenheit range we don't actually use. So the metric system was meant, one, to accomplish putting units in groups that actually kind of made sense to the physical world. So if we look at the gram, the gram is practical because it's related to atomic mass. If you look at a meter, it's actually related to fundamental length scales of the universe. When we look at, it's a good one, liters and milliliters. Those are pretty useful units because a cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. There were easy conversions. They were practical conversions. So the second thing about the metric system is it's really easy to convert between. So if you look at an inch versus a foot, the difference between an inch and a foot is 12 inches and a foot. So what we did was we shifted what's called an order of magnitude. Basically, a foot is 10 times larger than an inch. If we look at a foot versus a mile, okay, that's roughly a thousand times bigger, and so we shift three orders of magnitude. So when they developed the metric system, they said, you know, instead of having a different unit specializing for each length scale, we're just going to create units of measurement that shift by a power of 10. And the power of 10 is going to dictate the length scale we work on, but it's still basically fractions of the base unit. I know, a little confusing. But let's develop what's called the metric staircase. So the metric staircase looks like this. And sitting at the center of your metric staircase are what are called the base units. So our base units, gram, meter, and liter. Now the reason I draw this is as we go up, our units are going to get bigger. These are bigger length scales. As we go down, these are going to be smaller length scales. So there are names for these units here, here, and here. But the most practical unit is what's called the kilo. It's a kilo prefix. So it's a kilogram, kilometer, kiloliter. We don't really work with kiloliters. But kilograms and kilometer you've probably heard it before. This is 10 to the third times larger than whatever's in the base unit. So this is a thousand times bigger. So a kilo kilometer, kilometer, is a thousand times bigger than a meter. 
Now we can step down as well. So we have the prefix deci here. So deci is one tenth. You probably heard about a decibel. That's one tenth of a bell. This is 0.1 or 10 to the negative one times as large as whatever the base unit is. So for every meter, we have 10 decimeters. Now the units you're probably more familiar with, the centi and the milli. So a centimeter is 0 0.01 or 10 to the minus two times as big as a meter. So for every meter, we have, point, we have 100 centimeters and for every centimeter, we have 0 0.1 meters, 0 0.01 meters. The milli is the complement to the kilo. So it's 10 to the negative three point zero zero one. So one millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. So let's say you want to convert between grand meters and kilometers or grams and milligrams. Every time you go up, every step you take up, you're going to divide by 10. And every time you go down, you're going to multiply by 10. So if I want to figure out how many meters there are in a kilometer, I've got to take three steps. So point, one over 10, one over 10, one over 10. So this will tell us that one meter is one over 10 times one over 10 times one over 10 or 0 0.001 kilometers. Now let's say I want to go from meters to millimeters. Well, one millimeter, I've got to take one, two, three steps. So I'm going to multiply by 10 three times. So this tells me that one meter is roughly, or is exactly, 1,000 millimeters. So this is how the metric staircase works. Figure out what unit you're in, and then every time you have to move up, divide by 10. Every time you move down, you divide by 100, divide by 10. So if we want to go from centimeters, and we want to go to millimeters, the only thing we have to do is multiply by 10. So this would tell us one centimeter is 10 millimeters. Also, if we have one centimeter, we have one, two, three, four, five steps. So we're going to multiply by one over ten five times. And this will give us 0 0.0001 centimeters in every kilometer. And that's how you build up your conversion factors for the metric system.